Hi, Kevin Benison here. What is it that most sets you up for success on an appointed person course? Is it experience of working in a lifting row? Is it the ability to do maths well? Is it how well you've done at school? Or perhaps is it being able to write a good method statement? All of those things have a part to play for sure. But in my experience of delivering appointed person courses to hundreds of people over the past 10 years, it's not those things that are the biggest influences. Yes, an experienced crane operator and rigger may have an advantage when it comes to selecting cranes and lifting accessories. Yes, a good manager may have an advantage in understanding how best to convey information and instruction. Yes, a health and safety professional may have an advantage in carrying out risk assessments and preparing method statements. And yes, a university educated engineer may have an advantage in doing calculations. But do they have what is really needed? And on the other hand, it's really not going to be advantageous if you've barely been in the proximity of a crane before. Let's get the formality out of the way first. The law, Lawler 1998 in the UK, states that a person planning a lifting operation must be competent to do so. And codes of practice define a competent person as someone with the necessary theoretical and practical knowledge and experience. So ladies and gents, that means that you would be ill-advised to jump into planning lifting operations using cranes if you have little or no practical experience of using them. It also means that there are very few people who are competent to plan lifting operations with all types of lifting equipment. Most appointed persons will have much more experience on one or two types of lifting equipment than on others. And back to reality. When it comes to the construction industry in the UK, the leading car provider only recommends that candidates for the appointed person course have suitable experience. They do not require that to be the case. So, guess what? There are plenty of people attending the course who have little or no experience in lifting often put on there by employers who need a qualified appointed person now. Regardless of how much some of us may kick and scream about the current situation, it has been that way for some time and there's no indication of it changing soon. Therefore, it's often down to the candidate to get as informed and prepared as possible for the course prior to attending. Now, back to the point in hand. What do I believe to be the biggest factors in someone being successful on the course or not? Two things. Attention to detail and the ability to think in a logical and systematic manner. Measure twice, cut once, says the proverb, and that applies here too. An incorrect button unknowingly pressed on a calculator. A line drawn to scale a couple of metres, i.e. one centimetre if you're drawn at 1 to 200, longer than it should be. A dimension misread from a crane diagram. A load weight entered differently on the method statement to that which was calculated. Simple mistakes, which could be rectified at the time of error through closer attention to detail. By checking twice, by measuring twice. I remember marking one appointed person test a few years ago. The candidate had finished and handed in his work after around 4 hours 15 minutes of the permitted 6 hours 45 minutes, two and a half hours early. I'd asked him if he was sure he was finished, to which he confidently confirmed that he was. The main error he'd made resulting in him failing the test was due to lack of attention to detail. One which he may have noticed had he taken the time available to check his work before submitting it. How frustrating. Think of the potential consequences to safety and indeed cost if these simple mistakes were to be made in planning a real lifting operation. 
This is why precision is so critical in planning. Like so many other skills, attention to detail can be honed. Check, check and check again. If you're too busy to build systems, you'll always be too busy. Brian Logue So many things to do. So much to consider. Lots to remember. Overwhelm. It happens to the best of us. Our mind continues to throw things at us. Each new thing that crops up apparently as important or even more so than the last. Until one focuses on what one decides is the most important thing to do right now, one will continue to be distracted by what pops into the mind next. How can we stay focused on what is the most important thing to do now? Systems. Systems are in place to provide a logical process to achieve a desired outcome. Usually that means dealing with one thing at a time. Have you ever tried throwing several balls in the air simultaneously and catching them? You'll likely catch one. You may catch two if you're pretty quick at changing your focus and coordination and a bit lucky. The rest will fall. Throw one ball at a time and you'll catch them all in the order you choose to throw them. Having a good system for planning lifting operations will exponentially increase your chance of doing so successfully. That's if you choose to follow it, of course. Discipline weighs ounces, regret weighs tons. Jim Rohn It takes discipline to follow a system. It takes discipline to focus on the most important thing right now, rather than succumbing to the ever-present busyness of the mind. What do you choose? The discipline to create and follow a system or the tons of regret that may weigh heavier than any load you plan to lift? Work on the skills that will best set you up for success on the appointed person course and when in the role, whether that be now or in the future. Book your one-to-one -one online session with us to learn the system and improve your attention to detail. And as always, keep inspiring.